Welcome to the Power on Heels Fund Incorporated as we present this virtual masterclass as part of our series of the COVID-19 Financial Summit, Reestablishing Financial Security Aim the Crisis. I am Yvette Mayo, the founder and CEO of Power on Heels Fund Incorporated and the CEO of Yo Soy I Am LLC. Power on Heels Fund Incorporated is focused on minimizing the impact of gender pay gap inequity and the advancement of Latinas in the marketplace by providing specialized training programs, mentorship, and scholarships that are designed to enhance the earning potential, accelerate professional growth, and cultivate future leaders. Stay connected to Power on Heels on all our social media platforms, and please visit our website at poweronheelsfund.org. Stay informed and stay plugged in. There you can have all the information on our current events and all our efforts. The COVID-19 Financial Virtual Masterclasses are filled with industry experts and change agents sharing information to help you create smart financial strategies during these difficult times. Following reliable information and sound fact-based advice will go a long way in helping you achieve your financial goals. Remember, your financial mastery is about how you live and lead. Welcome to this masterclass, Leticia Vu, licensed real estate agent at Keller Williams Realty Metropolitan and a national coach for NARAP. Thank you so much, Yvette, for that wonderful introduction. And I would like to let our audience know what NARAP stands for, and that stands for the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. Thank you again so much for having me. So today we're going to talk about real estate during COVID-19. We are in very unprecedented times at this moment. It's a time of uncertainty, a time of a little bit of chaos for some of us, and I'm here to help educate us on what it is that we need to know about real estate during this very trying time for us all. So I'd like to go back just a tiny bit to the, re the Great Recession of 2008. And while COVID is different because of the circumstances of why we are here, we do need to learn from our past. And unfortunately, back in the Great Recession of 2008, a lot of Latino and Hispanic homeowners were the most affected. Millions lost their homes because they weren't educated, unfortunately, about the home buying process. And because of organizations such as NAREP, we've been able to change that. You know, over the five years, we as a population, the Hispanic Latino consumer, has been able to increase its home ownership every single year for the last five years. And so I'd like to applaud Yvette and thank her, along with the Power on Heels Fund, for bringing this education to our members during this very trying time to help us all. So first let's talk about current homeowner options. And with current homeowner options, the first option that we have would be a refinance. Now these are, this option is gonna be for homeowners that are um, in a better financial situation, they've been blessed and they are able to still work from home, they haven't fallen behind on their payments and perhaps are just very busy and haven't been able to take a look at their documents or even know what their interest rate is. So um, to uh, right now, interest rates at our all time low. And so in order to help our consumers save money, perhaps we need to take a look at where you are with your current interest rate and even perhaps your term and maybe even save you thousands of dollars over the life of the loan in getting you into a shorter term. Now, the next couple of options are gonna be for our consumers, our audience that might be in a little bit of a financial strain. Um, there are, I'm sure a lot of you have heard in the media, things such as a forbearance or a modification, and the mortgage companies are helping the consumers by, by allowing them this opportunity. And for some, you know, yes, it's, it's a fabulous opportunity, but there are some things that the consumer needs to be very aware of. And so a forbearance, what that means really more than anything is that your loan payments are actually postponed and in some cases they're reduced, but the interest is still accruing on the loan. So it's not necessarily a free pass, if you would. It's not that a lot of times they might tell you, oh, well, we're gonna forego your payments for the next four months. And so the consumer is under the impression that, okay, great, I don't have a mortgage payment for four months. 
we get through everything, the consumer gets through everything, they're back on their feet, they're back to work, and then all of a sudden the mortgage company starts calling and says, well, now you owe us the last four months of your mortgage payment on top of now you're starting your new payments. And so a lot of times the consumer is, well, I'm just now getting back to work, hence that's why I set up this option. And now it, it puts them even in a bigger financial stress. So definitely reach out to your current lender or your current servicer regarding these options and really, really understand what it is that those that, that particular option is going to entail for you. Now the next um, option is gonna be a short sale. And again, the, this is an option for borrowers that have fallen on some financial hard times. They have fallen behind on their mortgage payment with as little as one payment with as you know or even further now this particular option is an option to avoid the foreclosure um, making sure that when you come talk to someone as myself so this is where I can come in and actually help you I can help talk with your servicer or your bank I can help negotiate I can help that you as the homeowner avoid that foreclosure and retain the equity that you have in your property. So then you could then perhaps purchase another property or perhaps stay with some family while you get back on your feet and then potentially be able to, to buy a home later in the future because you've been able to um, you know, go through this process. And of course the last process, it can be for either, for either a person that's in good standing or for someone that potentially might start feeling like, you know what, I don't know if I can afford this house anymore. Um, and so that is just, outright selling the property. The benefits to that, obviously, you maintain your credit standing, you retain your equity. Um, and then right now, a lot of people are having to downsize with, with uh, a lot of people, either their hours are being cut due to COVID, or unfortunately, they're being furloughed for an extended period of time. This might be a good way to actually be able to um, get out of a pretty high mortgage payment and then potentially get yourself into a much more comfortable payment. And so I'd like to give just a quick um, stats on the numbers here. Um, I am in Houston, Texas, and so this is based on, um, out of the Houston Association of Realtors. And as far as the statistics, and this is just within the last 24 hours, we've had 665 new listings, 548 closings, and 264 new contracts. So if you're thinking about selling, now is the time. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about our prospective homeowners. So these are people that either maybe owned a home previously and don't own home one now, or have never purchased a home. And I get this question asked every single day. Is this a good time to buy? My answer, yes, several reasons. Rates, again, are at all time low. The inventory is up. It is what we call a buyer's market. So with that being said, the, the there's more opportunity for the buyer to be able to purchase the property. Now this shift actually happened prior to COVID. And so now during COVID, it's actually as you, as you base off the numbers I gave you earlier, it's now more than ever a great opportunity for you to buy. With time, we're probably going to start seeing some home prices actually start to come down just a tiny bit. And of course, there are programs available for first time home buyers. Now, with that being said, first time home buyers, depending on the program um, and or the lender, it's going to, so for some of them, their criteria is that you've never, ever, ever purchased a home before. But for some programs and for some lenders, um, their requirement is that you haven't owned a home within the last three years. Um, and then, of course, I am reaching out to my renters out there. How much do you pay in rent? Um, I know our audience is based off of the entire United States, and I know, obviously, California and New York, you know, the cost of living out there is so much higher. But here in Texas, specifically here in Houston, you know, for a one-bedroom apartment, depending on the area, it could go anywhere between $1,200 to $1,800. That's what a lot of people pay in their mortgage payments. So think about you as a renter how you could potentially own your home. Now, the next question I get asked a lot is, well, what is it that I need to do? Or how do I get started? Number one thing, going back to my um, previous conversation about what happened in 08, education. And you've already taken the first step. You are already here getting yourself educated. And of course, we do have a step-by-step -step process 
of the Home Buyer Education Program, a seminar that you can actually take with at my office, and it will help you on an eight-step process of what you need to do. Next step, of course, would be to get a pre-approval. And I can help you with by getting you connected with some of my preferred lending partners and getting the pre-approval so that you know what your buying power is. And last but not least, let's not forget our investors. So investors, actually there's a lot of people that are in the position of purchasing a second home for an investment uh, purpose. Um, and so I am talking to not only my first time investors, but I'm talking to my three seasoned investors. This is a perfect opportunity to invest in a second home due to the inventory because the inventory is up. Again, I know a lot of investors tend to purchase their homes in cash, but for my first time investors, a lot of them will have to finance. And because interest rates are so low, now would be an ideal time to think about investing in that second property. And with time, we may see actually the rental market increase due to the potential of what's happening on with COVID because of the fact that there are going to be some people leaving homes and getting back into the rental market. We may see an increase. So as an investor, that would be a good opportunity for you. And we are going to see a shift in the market in the next six to 12 months. We are unfortunately going to see some people that are going to get themselves in a short sale or in a worse situation, a foreclosure. So for those investors looking to purchase a, a home, this is definitely a good, a good time to do it. Now, I would like to kind of go over just some very, very quick stats as far as where we are from a homeowner perspective. And this is based off of the numbers from the 2019 State of Hispanic Homeownership Report that is published by NAREP. And NAREP actually, um, again, going back to the Houston market specifically, the market that added the most Latino-owned households in the U.S. economy between 2013 and 2018 was the Houston market. That is some phenomenal news for those of us here in Houston. Now, going back to a national perspective, from the numbers from the National Association of Hispanics, and while those numbers are phenomenal numbers from the Hispanic real estate perspective, the National Association of Realtors the, for the housing market in March nationwide was down just a tiny bit. It was down about 8.5%. Now, with that being said, the market here in Houston is a great market to be able to purchase. Now, not in Houston, it's okay. I work with Keller Williams, and Keller Williams is an American technology and international real estate franchise that's headquartered in Austin, Texas. It is the number one franchise in the United States by sales volume, ranking number of agents, and units sold. So not only because of the fact that I have my license with Keller Williams, but because of the affiliation that I have with NAREP, I have agents across the entire country and allow me to connect you with one of them so that I can be able to help you in your specific market. So I wanted to thank Yvette again and the Power on Heels Fund for this amazing opportunity to bring some very important information to you. I know it was very fast and I know a lot of you are gonna have questions. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My cell phone number and my email address are on the PowerPoint presentation. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Please allow me to help you. I don't want any of you to be in a situation where you are in a particular, where you're either in a, in a short sell for um, situation or forbearance situation or worse yet in a foreclosure situation. And if you're looking to purchase or invest, please allow me to help you with that option as well. Thank you so much. Gracias and thank you, Leticia. Wonderful information, wonderful resources. And um, I just cannot say enough. So thank you for being part of this um, virtual masterclass for COVID-19 Financial Summit. I appreciate everything that you shared and I look forward to hearing that you were able to help some of our viewers. Stay connected with the Power on Hills Fund Inc. on all our social media platforms and visit our website at poweronhillsfund.org. Stay informed and plugged in on all our efforts and all our events.
The COVID-19 Financial Summit Masterclasses are filled with industry experts and change agents sharing information to help you create smart financial strategies during these difficult times. Gracias and thank you for joining us. And remember, you are power on heels.